First deliveries of the much anticipated Rivian R1T electric truck have begun and it appears like this electric truck is going to live up to all the hype. Now I've seen quite a few videos talking about all the different impressive features built into the Rivian R1T and a lot of its capacities and the performance characteristics, but I haven't yet seen someone deep dive into the battery technology that underlies the Rivian R1T. In this video, I wanna do just that. Earlier this year, Rivian announced that Samsung SDI would be supplying battery cells for them, and based on information in this recent S1 filing with the SEC, we know that these batteries are not only cylindrical 2170 cells like Tesla uses, but also they're made with the same basic NCA or nickel cobalt aluminum battery chemistry, the same that Tesla also uses in their 2170 battery cells. Most likely Rivian has chosen this NCA or nickel cobalt aluminum battery chemistry due to its high energy density. Now this S1 form filing also mentioned that in addition to buying cylindrical cells from Samsung SDI, in the future, Rivian hopes to manufacture their own battery cells as well. Rivian mentions, quote, we intend to strategically invest in new facilities to increase our manufacturing capacity and maximize operational efficiency. These initiatives include establishing in-house battery cell manufacturing capabilities to complement third-party cell procurement, which will provide supply continuity and support our anticipated growth. I believe this is a really wise move by Rivian, not only to buy batteries from Samsung SDI, but also to develop and manufacture their own batteries in the future. This is of course something that Tesla is doing with their development of the 4680 batteries and other auto manufacturers are also working to do this as well. I believe it's the way of the future and I'm glad that Rivian is doing it as well. When it comes to the form factor, the 2170 cylindrical battery cells that Rivian has chosen for their electric vehicles. While there are trade-offs with every battery form factor and a number of electric vehicle manufacturers use pouch or prismatic battery cells, I personally prefer the cylindrical battery cells that Tesla uses in their battery packs, that Rivian uses in their battery packs, that for instance, Lucid also uses in their battery packs because it appears like these battery packs made with cylindrical battery cells have better thermal management properties. Now moving beyond the battery cell itself, moving to the battery packs, although Rivian does source the 2170 battery cells from Samsung SDI, they actually have developed and build in-house their own battery packs. Here's what Rivian had to say about their battery pack design in this S1 form filing. It, talking about the battery pack, packages high energy density 2170 form factor cylindrical lithium ion cells into in-house design modules. Each module contains two stacked layers of cells separated by a cooling plate. This axial cooling configuration maximizes cell density within our modules. The modules are connected in series and packaged into the battery pack. All vehicles include an underbody shield designed to absorb and deflect force from impacts. This design helps protect the battery system for our consumer vehicles in extreme off-road environments. So I know that was a lot of information. So I wanna go back and dive into sentence by sentence what we just read and really dive deeper into the concepts that Rivian mentions about their battery packs and battery cells. In that first sentence, not only do they use 2170 form factor cylindrical cells as we already talked about, however, it also mentions that they use in-house designed modules. When it comes to building a battery pack, there are really three major ways you can assemble a battery pack. The first way, and this is the way that Rivian uses based on what they've said here, is you take a bunch of battery cells, you assemble those into a module, and then you take those modules and assemble those into a battery pack. So it's a cell to module to pack design. A more efficient way is to build a battery pack that is a cell directly to a pack. You skip the module step and you just connect all the batteries together in a battery pack without the modules. The third way is the way that Tesla is going to use with their new 4680 battery cells and the structural battery pack. And that's very similar to the cell to pack design with the additional aspect of the battery cells in a structural battery pack actually serve as a structural element 
in that vehicle and thus further reduce the need for other structural elements to be added to the vehicle and increase the pack level energy density of the battery pack. Now, when it comes to the battery pack sizes that Rivian is currently offering and will offer in the future, and when it comes to the actual layout of the modules in these battery packs, this Charged EVs article from late 2019 has some quotes from Rivian's VP of Propulsion, and he mentioned, quote, each module has two layers, each containing 21700 type cylindrical cells. So we've got 15 kilowatt hours of energy in each module. There are nine of those modules in our standard pack, talking about the 135 kilowatt hour battery pack. And we have 12 of those in what we call our premium pack of 180 kilowatt hours, which gives us over 400 miles of range. So right now, if you go to Rivian's website, you can purchase the R1T truck with either the large battery pack, which is 135 kilowatt hours, or you can buy the max pack, which is 180 kilowatt hours. Rivian has also mentioned that in the future, they plan to offer a small pack. We don't know when that's going to be offered, but sometime in the future, a small pack that's going to be approximately 105 kilowatt hours. Based on the comments from Rivian's VP of Propulsion, we know that that large pack once again has nine modules and the max pack has 12 battery modules. Also, when it comes to the number of individual cylindrical battery cells that make up these battery packs, the large battery pack has 7,776 individual 2170 cells. And based on my estimates, that would mean that the max pack would have somewhere around 10,368 battery cells. And if they do bring up that small pack, that would have somewhere around 6,048 battery cells. When the Rivian R1T is equipped with this large battery pack, it can travel an EPA estimated 314 miles on a single charge. And with a max pack, that larger 180 kilowatt hour battery pack, the Rivian R1T should be able to go over 400 miles on a single charge. Moving back to breaking down the comments that Rivian made in the filing. Once again, Rivian mentioned each module contains two stacked layers of cells. And then specifically here, this is important, separated by a cooling plate. They mentioned this axial cooling configuration maximizes cell density within our modules. So notice specifically that Rivian mentions axial cooling and a cooling plate. That seems kind of confusing, but really it's a pretty simple concept. With a Tesla battery pack, for instance, in their 2170 cells, they use what's called radial cooling. If you look at like this patent image, for instance, you can see that Tesla has cooling channels that go weave in between the battery cells and those have a liquid that go through them to help cool the battery pack from the sides of the battery pack or radial cooling. In contrast to the way Tesla cools the 2170 battery cells in their battery packs, Rivian is using what they're calling an axial cooling method, which means they're pulling heat from the top and bottom of the battery cells with a cooling plate. Once again, going back to that charged EVs article from 2019, Rivian's VP of propulsion had this to say, quote, at the heart of the module is a cooling plate between the upper and lower cell layers. That allows us to control the cooling of those cells in the most efficient medium, which is cooling axially. We pull the heat out of the cell through its center, which is the most efficient way to do it, as opposed to radially. It allows us to pack those cells really close together. This allows us to get the highest volumetric energy density available today. Notice that the VP of propulsion talked about the benefits of using a cooling plate, this axial cooling, which allows them to position more battery cells close together, not having to have the cooling channels weaving in between the battery cells. Now, with that being said, I wanted to dive into some actual numbers, some official energy density pack level numbers for the Rivian R1T and the Rivian R1S and compare that to the competition. So I went over to the official EPA website and I pulled up the different filings for the Rivian R1T and R1S electric vehicles and Tesla's Model X, Model Y, the Lucid Air, and also the Mustang Mach-E. And based on official EPA certification filings, the Rivian R1T and the R1S have a pack level energy density of around 169 watt hours per kilogram. This compares to, for instance, the Tesla Model X Plaid, which according to EPA documents, has a pack level energy density of 186 watt hours per kilogram. And the Tesla Model Y has a pack level energy density officially of 180 watt hours per kilogram. Also, the Lucid Air has a pack level energy density of 171 watt hours per kilogram. And the extended range Mustang Mach-E has a pack level energy density of 166 
watt hours per kilogram. So as you can see from this chart, when it comes to today's numbers, Rivian's battery pack is not the most energy dense battery pack available like it might have been in 2019. However, it still is very impressive and it's right there where it needs to be. Now, when it comes to a really practical way to determine how effective Rivian's cooling system is, this can be seen when it comes to charging speed. When it comes to DC fast charging, that creates a lot of heat in the battery pack and the cooling system has to kick in. And if that cooling system is not effective, then your charge times could be quite slow. However, according to Rivian, the Rivian R1T and the R1S are able to charge up to a peak rate of 200 kilowatts and are able to add up to 140 miles of range in a 20 minute charge. If we do the math, 140 miles is 44.5% of the 314 mile EPA estimated range that you get with a Rivian R1T. And if you have a 135 kilowatt hour battery pack and you gain a 44.5% charge, you will have gained 60 kilowatt hours of battery capacity in those 20 minutes. And that equates to around three kilowatt hours of battery capacity being added per minute of charging. In comparison, the Tesla Model X, according to Tesla, should be able to add 175 miles in 15 minutes of charging. And 175 miles is roughly 50% of the 351 mile EPA rated range of the long range Model X. That would mean with a 100 kilowatt hour battery, a 50% charge gain would be somewhere around 50 kilowatt hours added in that 15 minutes or 3.33 kilowatt hours added per minute of charging. One more example, the Tesla Model Y according to Tesla can gain around 162 miles in 15 minutes of charging and 162 miles is roughly 49% of the 330 mile EPA range of the long range all wheel drive Model Y. And based on what I can tell, the long range battery pack built into the Model Y has somewhere between 76 and 82 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. And if we assume 82 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, that would mean that a 49% charge would equate to somewhere around 40 kilowatt hours added in 15 minutes of charging or 2.67 kilowatt hours added per minute of charging. So as you can see, based on these numbers that I've done, it appears like Rivian's axial cooling system does a good job. And although it adds a little bit less miles per minute of charging, that's due to inefficiencies. It's such a heavy, large truck as compared to a more efficient Tesla Model X or Model Y, but the actual charging speeds themselves and thus testing the ability of their cooling systems seem to be very respectable. Now, when it comes to another important factor of a battery, the battery life, although we don't have an official estimate from Rivian on how long they expect their battery packs to last, we can take a look at Rivian's warranty, which according to them, both the battery pack and the drivetrain of the Rivian R1T and the R1S are covered for eight years or 175,000 miles, whichever comes first. They mention in this warranty statement that this covers a 30% or greater capacity loss during this eight years or 175,000 miles. Rivian's warranty is slightly better than what Tesla offers for the Model S and the Model X, and also a little bit better than what Tesla offers for the long range Model 3 and Model Y. Moving on to the last two sentences that I want to break down, Rivian once again mentioned all vehicles include an underbody shield designed to absorb and deflect force from impacts. This design helps protect the battery system for our consumer vehicles in extreme off-road environments. Of course, protecting the battery pack on any electric vehicle is important, but especially so with a vehicle like the Rivian R1T or the Rivian R1S which have very impressive off-roading capabilities as well, and thus may be subjected to a little harsher conditions. So I'm really glad to hear that Rivian has put an extra layer of protection on the bottom of their vehicles. If you'd like to get your hands on a Rivian R1T truck or a Rivian R1S electric SUV, orders are open at rivian.com, but you may have to wait. Currently, Rivian has a backlog of around 71,000 pre-orders for their truck and SUV combined. And as of December 15th, 2021, Rivian has built 652 vehicles and delivered 386 of them. With their current factory in Normal, Illinois, they are targeting an annual production rate of around 200,000 vehicles once it's fully ramped up. And they just announced plans for a second factory near Atlanta, Georgia, that will have a 400,000 annual production target. So hopefully as they ramp up production at their normal Illinois facility and as they build the new facility near Atlanta, Georgia, we'll start to see a lot more of these trucks on the road. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for the Rivian R1T and the R1S. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below, not only what you think about the battery technology, but what you think about these vehicles themselves. 
As a reminder, if you've not already, make sure that you go over to cleanerwatt.com. I'll also put a link in the video description and check out the 2022 Electric SUV Buyer's Guide. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.